Welcome back to another episode of The Single Season. On this show, I help singles navigate sometimes the treacherous waters of dating and relationships. If you are interested in being on the show, all you have to do is go to my website, alignwithallison.com, or book a private consultation. Today, we have Joanna, who is struggling with kind of dropping that signal that she's available and for gentlemen to actually come over and approach her. So let's welcome Joanna onto Hi. the show. Joanna. Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. So we were talking earlier and you shared with me that you're having a little bit of a struggle in regards to gentlemen approaching you and you kind of giving off the energy, the air that you are available and you want to be approached. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Like what's going on? Okay. So um, I do have an older brother and he has a motto of, if you look at me twice, I'm coming over when he's out and about or whatnot. So if I'm out and about at a go to a bar or go have dinner or whatnot and I see a gentleman looking or I look at him, you know, I might look twice or give like a little a little high wave or something like that to make it comfortable like, hey, it's open, you can approach and you'll get the walk by or nothing at all or you'll get a wave back and that's about it or if I'm out in the store or some some place, I'll get the compliments like, oh, you look good or your body's nice. But it's never like, hey, I'd like to take you out or can we get to know each other or nothing like that. So I'm like, OK, it, am I am I too strong in, <laughs> in my approaches, my 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 energy? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> OK, so Joanna, where are you from? I detect an accent. Oh, I'm actually. um right out here by Los Angeles, California. I'm in San Bernardino, about 30 minutes outside of LA. So born and raised, but my family's from the South. Okay, good. I, I heard that Southern accent. I heard that twang. Okay. <laughs> uh, the reason why I mentioned that specifically is because depending on where you are from, and I was just having this conversation, depending on where you are from, sometimes there is an energy that is exuded by the woman and then sometimes there's a culture in that community from men that will dictate how they are approached. So, for example, my New York ladies, we in the building, you know, sometimes we have a disposition that is not inviting. They call it the resting bee face, right? And so we have to be mindful that we are warm and we are smiling, like literal teeth smiling because we want to give people the impression that we are approachable. We have to be mindful of our body language, right? Even me, my body language ain't right right now. Like if I want to be approached, shoulders back, chest open. If we're walking around crossed arms or giving an impression that we are bothered or annoyed, then people will not approach us. And rightfully so. We want to date people who can read the room. Right. And if so, if you right. look annoyed or if you look frustrated, we're going to get to the next one, which is look busy that's a big one, then a reasonable person is going to say, well, that chick is busy. I might make a statement real quick because I can't help myself. She just looks so pretty, but I'm not going to stop her because I'm concerned about being rejected or making her feel uncomfortable. Busyness. You got to slow down. So I don't know how you rolling out there in L.A., but if it's, that, if it's the hustle and bustle of New York City, like where I'm, a, where I'm from, what I'm accustomed to, and you running down the aisle so that you can get this quick cereal, and then you're getting in the express line, and then you're running for the bus, like people are not gonna, they're not gonna stop. They don't wanna stop you because that's rude. Clearly, I am not available to speak to you if I am running, if I'm gunning it, if I'm out of here, right? So slowing down is going to make a big difference in being or appearing as approachable. OK, so that warm smile, okay. the opening of the chest, slowing down. Also, changing where you go. So I'm not sure exactly where you're on the prowl, right? But I need mm -hmm. you to be mindful of where you are going in your city in order to meet eligible bachelors. Because you want to put yourself in a position where a conversation makes sense. If you go into the club or the bar where the music is loud, the conversation doesn't make sense. If you're going to a brunch that's known to have the live DJ, right, where it's more about the music and the dancing than it is about conversation, then you're not positioning yourself to engage in any kind of meaningful way. So you want to put yourself in places and spaces where a conversation makes sense. So what does that look like? Any kind of mixer, 
any kind. It can be a professional one, whatever industry that you're in. If it's an industry that have that have men, like if you're a makeup artist, mm -hmm. maybe not that mixer, right? But if it's going to be, if you're in real estate, if you're in business in any kind of way, if you're in uh, medicine, pharmaceuticals, things like that, or if you're not in that industry, you you have a friend that is. Hey girl, next time that you're going out to one of those real estate mixers, let me know. I want to come with you. A mixer by default is created for the purpose of mixing, right? So it allows for people to slow down. They know that your purpose there is to get to know people. That is the whole purpose of us going to a mixer. Okay. A conference in a male dominated industry. So again, if you're in education, don't go to the teachers conference, right? Maybe you wanna to go to the building leadership conference where you see more men who tend to be in leadership, but in education, so it makes sense. If you're in nursing, don't go to the nurses conference. Maybe you wanna to go to the pharmaceutical conference, right? So you have to look up those types of places where the purpose is socializing. The purpose is getting to know each other. The purpose is having communication so that it's natural for you to walk over to a guy and it doesn't have to be romantic in nature. It, it has the tag that he is a realtor in the Bay Area, forgive me, I'm just, you know, right? You and you in California. So that he's a realtor in the Bay and you're looking to expand in the Bay so you can go over and have a conversation. Then you're gonna look down at the ring. Does he have a ring on his finger, right? And mm -hmm. a lot of guys who are good men are gonna throw their wife or their children into the conversation so that they can kind of avoid any kind of awkwardness early on, mm -hmm. right? And if he okay. does, great, you'll continue the conversation, then you move on to the next person. But that is how you're gonna position yourself. So you're gonna be mindful of your facial features, right? You're smiling, mm -hmm. you're warm, you're welcoming, your body language, and putting yourself, slowing down, and putting yourself in places and spaces where conversation makes sense. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense okay. that we can sit here and we can converse, okay? Now, I know some may say that, you know, I want you to be more mindful of your presentation. So having your hair done, doing a little bit of makeup, you know, dressing up a little bit. But I'm sure you have gotten attention, and me too, where we think that we look our worst. We're coming from the gym. We still yes. we got our scarves on, you know, like, so I wouldn't even care too much about that. Of course, you don't want to go around looking bummy 24 seven, right? If, if you can spruce up, spruce up, but don't be too concerned about that point. More importantly, is going to be your body language, slowing down, getting off the phone, getting off the phone, because if you have headphones in or you're mid conversation, mm -hmm. I know, I don't know about you, but my mama always said, you don't see me on the phone. That's what we've been taught since right. childhood. You don't interrupt people. <laughs> Right. And so those are things you need to be mindful of. And again, positioning yourself, your husband, more likely than not, is not going to be a guy who's going to knock on your door. The only people who knock on your door is the Uber Eats man. Right. The Amazon man. Then it's going to be the plumber and the electrician. And not to say that they're not worthy of wives, but more likely than not, your husband's not going to knock on your door. He's definitely not going to be delivered in a box. You can't order him off of Amazon, which means that you have to put yourself out there. And when people use that phrase out there, many times it's not clear. Like, what do you mean by out there? That's what I mean. Mixers, conferences, social gatherings, someone's game night, somebody else's baby shower, not the dude that you like, somebody else's baby shower, right? Somebody else's family reunion, somebody else's kickback, somebody else's 40th birthday parties, 25th birthday dinner, a retirement party. Like you have to put yourself in places and spaces where conversation is the crux of the event. We are here to talk. That's how you're gonna be met by the partner that you deserve. Okay. Mm-hmm. Talk to me more, because I feel like okay. there's a little bit of doubt coming out of you, Joanna. Like, you ain't really believing. You ain't picking up what I'm putting down. No. I, I, I'm picking it up with a shovel. Okay. Um, you, uh, <laughs> you, you hit on a couple points. Um, the busyness. I'm always like, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. My schedule full. Da, 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 da. So I can see where that's like, oh, well, hey, you look nice, and they keep on moving because I'm like, oh, okay, yes, you know, I'm always on the go. And then um, I'm in the fitness industry, Los Angeles, mm -hmm. of course. And being in the athleisure wear and I like I'm at work, I live in do rags, but my my hair stays done underneath there, but it needs to obviously be seen. <laughs> so, yes. But yes. um and getting out of the clubs and going to mixers. <laughs> yep. Mix. Is, and uh, I mean the good thing about your industry is that it is male dominated. So yes. there's a, a, obviously a fair amount of uh female 
representation and participation, but it's still male dominated. So you are in a position to go to those events, which would be to your professional benefit anyway. Right. Yes. You're going to learn, you know, different techniques in whatever, how to grow your business, how to do this, how to do that. Whatever new machinery is out there, whatever new, I don't know, work with me, you know, mm -hmm. like nutrient stuff, all that yes. kind of things. Yes. Right. You go to any kind of nutritional events like it's it's already in your professional benefit and development anyway. And then yes. by default, you could be found by the partner that you deserve. So we have to put ourselves in that position of slowing down and going in mm -hmm. places and spaces where we're having conversation and then also even though you might come across the guy who has the ring on and so your intention is not to move forward with him, he got a brother, he got some friends, he has a business oh, partner, he has a frat bro, right? He's super right. young, he got his daddy, and his daddy fit too, right? Hey. And his daddy divorced from his mama 10 years ago, <laughs> so he's ready. So it's not only about doing the approaching to people that you are attracted to and would like to date specifically. Rubbing shoulders with like-minded people is going to expand your general networking circle. And again, that's a win for you professionally. That's a win for you in terms of your friendships. And again, it could be that's that, what's the eight degrees of separation? It's yeah. not that guy, it's not that girl that you met, it's that girl's brother's best friend. And you got somebody who can co-sign, yeah, girl, I went to college with him, he's a real solid guy, he's this, he has this going on, he's a Christian man, he's doing well in his business, he's respectful of women, he, you know, he don't have no children, I know that for a fact, he ain't married, I know that for a fact. So that's a win, that you can meet people through other people. So you got to get out there, you have to make it your business to be socializing and in those spaces. Okay, I appreciate Literally your Literally and figuratively, make it your business and make it your business. Okay. I appreciate you. Thank you. It does. You're welcome. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say? Go ahead, Joanna. Oh, no. Oh, um, no. I was just saying I appreciate your pointers. Um, I'm actually going to put them into action this weekend. Um, we have an a, event coming up this weekend, so uh, we'll see. <laughs> yes, we'll see. Now, I do want to make one last point. I mentioned a little bit before, but I want to bring it back the um, the clothing, right? So mm -hmm. if you're in fitness, I would imagine that you probably have an amazing physique, right? Over, yes. <laughs> All right, so show it off. Show off those legs. Like, you know, make sure that yeah. people are seeing. I don't want you to only do the long sleeve uh, shirt, the long sleeve pants. Like, sh you can use that athleisure wear, is that the way that you put it? Yes. Right, the athletic yes. clothing. You can do that and that's fine. You can still look sexy and also attract that partner. You're very correct. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about some of the challenges that you're facing, maybe as a Southern girl in California, because I have to tell you, based on my experience, Southern California and Miami are the hardest marketplaces. I hate using that term because it sounds like so animalistic, but marketplaces yes. for dating. So tell me about, it. has there been like a culture shock or any kind of issues in that regard? Um. I, f I find that men tend to like to be more approached out here, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. but they tend to already have either counterparts or situationships that's going on. I'm not with the drama. Um, I like the, the not male, sh what is it? Like the men opening the doors and, oh, oh chivalry. Yes, yeah, chivalry. So like, I'll, wait outside the door like I, I see that we're both about to enter I'll wait to see if you're gonna open it and you're standing there waiting for me to open I'm like okay well this is backwards <laughs> like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so um wanting the man to be the man so that I can be the woman is is hard out here I haven't came across that a lot <laughs> okay so so um, so so this is an important point that you bring up right so you're looking for something that's a little bit more traditional yes Right, They're those traditional roles. Now, I, I gotta forewarn you, because this is an issue, that many times, both sexes are looking for traditional roles to be fulfilled when it's to their benefit. And then when that traditional role is not necessarily to their benefit, they're like, uh-uh, we living in a modern society, we both gotta cook. Uh-uh, we live in a modern society, we both gotta clean. But why you didn't open mm -hmm. my door? And why you didn't ring my bell? And why you're not paying for all of the dates, right? So there needs to mm -hmm. be some balance. Now, I'm not saying that you need to give up on what your expectations are in terms of chivalry, but there has to be a little bit of a give and take. If you want that traditional man, 
he's going to have traditional expectations of you, Joanna. Are you prepared to fulfill some of those less desirable traditional expectations of women? I actually look forward to it. Um, mm. I love cooking. Like every dinner, you're going to have like your dessert. You're going to have your breakfast. Your coffee's ready when you wake up. When you come home, your clothes is on the bed. Like kids are outside playing. You don't have to worry about that. Like it's, I love, that's my thing. That's what I do. I, I, that's how I show my love. So like, mm -hmm. if you're that person, that's what you're. Um, it's, it's, it's not like you do that. I do. It, it's just the house. It's mine. Like mm -hmm. everything's taken care of. You don't have to worry about that. You got the bills. Wonderful. Need a little extra. Like if we go on a date, I'll, I'll do the tip. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. still, cause it might be an expensive date. We out here towards LA, you know, but, um, mm -hmm. that's what I look forward to. I, I love doing laundry. I love cooking. Like that's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So. so then now what we might want to consider is that you are targeting gentlemen from the South who may have re relocated to L.A. or the L.A. area recently because we cannot have an expectation if that's the culture. We can't have an expectation there that we're going to disrupt their culture. Instead, mm -hmm. we need to adapt. So there's two adaptations that we can do. Adaptation number one is that you are going to follow their lead and they're not as traditional as you would like, which that's not a desirable adaptation, right? Adaptation mm -hmm. number two is that you are gonna target people who have a similar cultural upbringing as you. So what can you do? What you might wanna consider, you're gonna go on Facebook and you're gonna look for, wh where in the South you said you're from? You didn't say. El Paso. Okay, so te Texas. So you might want to see, look up like Texans in LA. There, are, there is a Facebook for everything, for everything. There is a Facebook group, right? <laughs> so Texans in LA, right? And then you should be attending the events, networking on those types of groups, so that you can find someone who is in alignment with you. And you might, you might want to join. Um, I don't know South. I don't know um, Cal. Uh, what do you call it? like? The other places in the South, people, Alabamians, mm -hmm. I don't know what the hell you call those, right? Any, <laughs> any other kind of s Southern southern folks in L.A., try and find all of those groups. At the end of the day, they're all in L.A. already, so it doesn't matter which Southern state they're from, right. but you're looking for Southern values on the West Coast. The good thing is that it's a melting pot, like New York, right? So you're going to mm -hmm. find every type of human being in the L.A. area, so it's not like you're in Rhode Island asking for people to have Southern roots and Southern <laughs> culture and Southern values, you're in LA, so it's not that bad, but you might wanna be a little bit more targeted. That way, this is not a whole explanation of, well, where I'm from, the expectation mm -hmm. is that men do this and women do that. F that. What you're gonna do is, you're, you're in LA, there are millions of people, and I'm sure there are millions of people who are relocated from the South, mm -hmm. and you are going to go to their events and their spaces and their places, and you're gonna connect with those people too. So we're not only gonna do, like we talked about professionally, that's gonna be one way, because it doesn't mean okay. that everyone in LA is not traditional, doesn't follow those values, but if we wanna be more specific, more specific and more targeted, and you already said that there's something that's key to you and important to you and you're not finding it, that's their culture. We're not gonna down them for their culture, but we're gonna have to adapt. Right. So you might have to find you a nice Southern boy in LA. Overstood. Come on, Allison. <laughs> this is what I do professionally. Alignwithallison.com. Testimonials <laughs> everywhere. This is what I do. Come on, stop playing. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. Okay, so as we wrap up, what lingering questions or concerns or thoughts? Nothing too minor, nothing too major. Anything. What's going on? What are you thinking? Um, I do have the the apparel thing. Uh, well, issue. Um because I try not to, I'm, I'm curvy on the body, like it, the, the body's nice, but I try not to put too much out there yes. <laughs> because I don't like the, the, wrong the retort. Yes, mm -hmm. and it, 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 it's even in the athletic where it's, it's ridiculous. So okay. like trying to find a happy medium of like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm still girly, but um, don't holler at me like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. like, so, still attractive. so this is what you're going to do. 
The rule of thumb that I've heard from stylists is that you're going to show off one body part and only one for every outfit that you have on. So that means that mm -hmm. if you have on cleavage, or you have on, if you have cleavage that's showing, right, then that means that whatever is on the bottom needs to be loose fitting. It should be like an A-line skirt, right? If you're showing off the legs today, that means you should have a high neckline. If you're showing off oh. the curviness of the bottom, then that means the top should be covered. So you should be showing off one body part per outfit, and that would help to, to quell some of the attention that you don't desire. You're gonna get it regardless. Like I said, you can have on sweatpants and a baggy mm -hmm. t-shirt and a scarf on, you're gonna get attention regardless. But if you're concerned about just too much where it makes you uncomfortable, that's usually the rule of thumb. One, if it's a high slit, that means the neckline is tall. You get my point? The legs are out, yes. that means you're gonna go with long sleeves. So one body part that you'll accentuate at a time. Okay, overstood. Um, okay. Also, well, my age bracket, I, um, I'm about to start my second quarter. Um, <laughs> I like that. I never heard that before. That's cute. Oh, yes. Uh, what? Is there an age bracket that maybe I, I should target or should I just be open to who the person is as a human being? Mm -hmm. So relatively speaking, I'm sure we've all heard like, you know, girls develop faster than boys, mature faster than boys. And I think that that's a fair thing even to adulthood. I just generally think that women tend to be very general, very general before they tear me up on, on every platform. Very generally, women tend to be uh, a more mature and further along than men are. So I'm not a proponent. I mean, people find love at any age, but I'm not going to advertise to folks, go ahead and date some guy that's 10 years your junior. I would say max two or three years your junior, and then I would go no more than 10 years your senior. And the reason why I say no more than 10 years your senior is because you also don't wanna put yourself in a position where you become a caretaker very early on in your life, right? So you're 35, he's 55, even if he's a fit 55, 10 years down the line now he's 65, right? Now we're having <laughs> conversations about SS, uh, with Social Security checks, like it's a little bit above <laughs> like where you may be in your life right now, right? And then on top of the yes. health, particular health concerns, uh, again, young people can can potentially not be healthy. That, but we all know as folks get older, they tend to become unwell. So I would say no more than ten years your senior, and no more than three years your junior. Okay. Okay. Relatively. Now you may find a guy five years your junior, and he is killing it. He's super mature. He knows exactly what he wants. Don't write someone off immediately. But relatively speaking, three years minus 10 years plus. No more than okay. three years minus, no more than 10 years plus. Okay, okay. Okay. Um, so Joanna, yes. I want to thank you for being on the show. I hope that you got some valuable information to help you navigate the treacherous waters of your single season sometimes. Did you? Do you feel like you... Oh here? yeah, you hit every every point that you gave me. I'm about to put into action. You'll get a DM later this week. <laughs> good. I'm I'm so glad to hear it. So thank you again for being on the show. Have a good one. You too. Thank you. You're welcome. So for our closing conversation, I hope that you guys were able to learn from Joanna in regards to what her non-negotiables are. She said it's really important that the guys that she dates have chivalry and some of that Southern charm that she's accustomed to. But we can't change Miami. We can't change Chicago. We can't change New York. We can't change LA. Instead, what we need to do is we need to be the ones who adapt appropriately. So you use the internet, you use your social circles so that you can find the people who are in alignment with you versus complaining potentially or trying to change the culture of where you are now. Folks, I'm so glad that you decided to tune in for this episode. I hope that you were able to extrapolate something of value that you can apply during your single season. Have a good one.